So we've got the pier stake out done. They'll be coming in and peering the pool today. The orange is the edge of the pool. And then they came in and the pins indicate the pier locations. So we've got a concrete truck here, we're wheelbarrow and everything in. So what we have to do with the concrete is that to be really precise. We've got to set the height that the pier is going to be at on the bottom. So we measure that depth down from where we're pouring. That way the concrete ends up in the right spot. Then we're coming in and putting steel in the uh, piers uh, down into the holes themselves. So these are all going to be, when they dig the pool out, they'll be sitting on the floor of the pool. Okay, we've got the pool dug now. We can see where the piers came out. So the top of the pier is going to be shot into the bottom of the pool. We do what's called a pier cap. We dig out and it's gunited around it. So you can see the piers are different levels. Gee, up here it's really high because it's up at the bench. Or it's in the tanning ledge. Or it's in the spa. So we end up with all these different levels, but the pool's different levels, so it all makes sense once the hole is dug. So, uh, today's plumbing day. Uh, we may get steel too, so we're putting in the, uh, the main drains right now, and gonna have it all uh, pretty much done by the end of the day. So, again, with our piers, come in and it's gonna be set up. We dug those holes in the ground with the pier truck. Now the pool's dug out, and we, uh, have the exposed top of the pier and we'll be before the pool will be shot in place on top of that. Got the tile work started today and some of the stone work. The coping is almost all on. Uh, they'll get the water features started later today. Uh, I think the tile is going to look stunning uh, with the uh, blue surf uh, that's going to be used inside the pool. So slowly the pieces are coming together. We're catching up with the builder, uh, which we were kind of behind because we never could get in here with the uh, grading done. So it's going to look awesome. We're in Westlake, Texas today, and this is a roll beam. So most people see it when it's finished. So this is actually how this is constructed. So you can see we've come in with the tile. They've done the water line, and when they set the water line to level load up, they come in and set this material right here that they can set the tile on to make it sure it's perfectly level. Then this is stripped out, and then the pebble sheen comes up to the bottom of this tile when they're completed. So then what we do is float this out so it's perfectly smooth so when we put the tile on it'll look really good so what's happened is we've got the water line on and then we're going to take the rest of the tile and you can see here the concept of what's going to happen we're going to take the tile and it's going to roll all the way up to here now one of the things that happens is this doesn't add a lot of cost because what happens is our coping, which typically would have been 18 inches wide, is now only 12 inches wide. So, got a smaller piece of travertine, but yes, we do add more glass here, uh, but it's not a huge cost difference. And 
if we're dealing with standard materials, it's almost the same exact cost. So we'll end up with the tile will come right up to the top of the coping and roll down. So the nice thing is when I sit there in front of the spa jet and I lean back, I don't have a piece of coping sticking me in the neck like if it was overhanging like it is on this side here. So that's uh, how a rolled spa edge is constructed. The, the critical thing with it is you have to use a one by one material. Uh, if you try to use a bigger piece, then it's gonna get some more angles and it's gonna poke you and not be real comfortable. So it has to be a one by one material. Now, whether it's glass or it's ceramic, it's not gonna matter. Uh, we've done a lot of beautiful rolled edges in ceramic, but the nice thing about glass is it's gonna stick above the water and it's gonna sparkle in the sunlight and it's gonna look real pretty. This on the back is, is a water feature. Have these water bowls sitting on this ledge. So the water is gonna come in out of the spout here and spill down into the water bowl. And then the water bowl is gonna overflow into a trough and that's going to fill that pool. Well, we wanted more water for the channel, so that's what these is. The water steps down into the pool, give a nice water feature across here, as well as the architectural features of the water bowl. And then this whole wall provides excellent screening from the back. Now, the challenge was the drain. So this is what we call a raised beam, because it's raised above the pool, makes sense. And so this is a raised beam here. We've got this all set up so the water can't escape on the sides and leak out. But then where it goes below the pool is called a drop beam. So we've got stone that's going down all the way back of an ugly gray wall. Now, some people would do that and say, well, only the neighbor has to look at it. But we don't want to be unneighborly. And so we've got a really nice stone finish here that matches with the rest of the stone on the house on the back of the wall. So anything that's below my feet is called a drop beam. Anything above my feet is a raised beam. And that's the neighbor's puppy. Hi puppy. <laughs> Hi puppy. Okay, so that raised part here uh, is going to give them privacy as they look out. But as the neighbors look back, it looks like it's a pretty tall wall, almost eight feet tall, but it's only four feet above the pool and four feet below. The pool. So retaining walls will come in and attach to this. So they don't need as much retaining wall with the trees. So this Mike, we're at West Lake. That's what a raised beam and drop beam is, uh, along with the really cool water feature set up, uh, which we'll show you later on how that looks uh, for some privacy as well. Because when we're hanging out in our room, some people like that to be a private time. Other people like to visit with everybody. So we want to come up with what works best for you. When we switch from deck level with the pool to a drop beam where there's stone down below we have to have a wider piece of stone to cover it because we're covering the stone that's on the side of the pool so the coping piece here has to be wider well the challenge with the travertine is this particular travertine uh, to get the wider pieces with the curve it only comes in 12 inches in width so we go from 12 inches in width to two nines right here to make the 18 that goes to the corner. So that's the one thing with the drop beam is you gotta realize the cap, which is the coping on the pool, is going to become wider to cover the stone on the side of the pool. Now, spa spillways, you want some motion of water and you want some sound of water. So when we have a stair step spillway, travertine that's rounded on the edge, how do you handle that? Because if you stack pieces of this on the stair step, the water's just gonna wrap around the edge and curl and you're not gonna get very much of a water feature. You're not gonna see anything. You're just gonna, water's just gonna hold on to the edges of the stone. So here we use a piece of silver travertine which has got some grays and some browns in it. So what we did is here we switched to a gray smoke looters and we did a chipped edge. Now the chipped edge is gonna break the water up more. So we're gonna have a better water action that goes down these stair steps than if we use something that was really smooth like this. Okay, so it's just a little detail to think about on your spillway. What do you want it to look like? Do I need to match this material there? Or do I wanna use something different? 
And on first glance, most people will never notice it's two different materials, but they definitely will notice later on when this runs, it's gonna look a lot prettier. So it's just something important to think about in the details of your spa and the spa building. There's a house back there, but I can't see it. That's why we put the wall there for privacy. It's kind of framed up on that tree too. All these things that we think about to make it all work perfect for you, the homeowner, and whatever works best for you. Now some people would say, oh, let's put a vanishing edge there, which the water would disappear and look like it was flowing into the neighbor's house. So this was a much better solution for this particular project. This is a really cool cabana space. You got the fireplace. Really cool ceiling. It'll look cool when the water pots are installed. Everything's finished up. We'll get deck board this week. It's gonna be awesome.